heading to heading it <laughs> just crashed my video y'all better uh not poop in my car they're brave they're brave all right number where are we at here jesus dude that is strong What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. I am really excited to do this one. It has been 18 months since I've taken ownership of this 2016 BMW M3. It has been amazing. It's been an awesome journey. You guys have come along with me. I greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, basically I'm just addicted to modding and have a blast and like to do comparison videos and stuff like that, unboxings. Anyway, you should subscribe now if you haven't done so already. So let's get right to it. In the past 18 months, I have done much, much, much more than 18 mods. Actually, here is a complete list right now. Um, but I'm gonna go over my 18 favorite mods. And it was very difficult putting this list together and then even more difficult trying to rank them. And by no means is, you know, number 17 not awesome or 16 not awesome. It made the list. Let's get to it. So. For number 18, this was actually, this is a difficult one. Um, there's an ongoing dispute that I have with this manufacturer. I'm not gonna name the company right now because the dispute is still ongoing. Uh, I did drop the name in another video, which uh, I talk about refreshing the rear end and I point out the uh, carbon fiber spoiler and how a carbon fiber spoiler still makes the back end. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, but I will say I regret going with this manufacturer and uh, the quality about two weeks after I posted that video, which was, I want to say, earlier this year, uh, the clear coat has started to kind of diminish a little bit. And I'm under the warranty, so I've reached out to them, uh, said, cool, we'll get you a replacement. I'm very appreciative. I'm glad that they said they would do it. They said four to six weeks. We're almost at month seven. So that's my... Um, unhappiness with that. So I'm not going to name the manufacturer right now, but it really does transform the back end. That puny little color match one they do, which is like an inch wide. I don't know. I don't know why BMW does that. So um, this was number 18. Number 17. Number 17 is a critical part for S55. That is the ESS charge pipes. So Brad, what is so cool about ESS charge pipes? Well, let's just not strictly consider ESS the company. I do like that I have silicone. I do like the fact that um, it doesn't heat soak and that it gives a little bit of flexibility if you have to change the spark plugs. Um, but I'm just talking about really the charge pipes in general. So really, why is that on the list? Well, it's a crucial part because right away I knew I was going to increase the boost on this. I was going to I was going to flash it. And uh, the stock ones, they we, we all know, right? They, they crack or they pop off or they explode into a zillion pieces and no, they don't do that. But anyway, it was a critical part because I knew that it was a must and it takes the fear of something happening with the stock ones. So that's number 17. Number 16, number 16. This was a nice little refresh as well. And that was when I replaced the rondelles with the gloss black carbon fiber custom painted by IND. These babies are beautiful. Uh, I'm just kind of lumping them all together. I'm saying the floating wheel caps, the hood. My whole car has this black and white theme and um, the, the blue didn't really bother me, but I just wanted to kind of clean it up and, you know, get rid of the chrome really around the rondelle. Um, everything is, you know, carbon fiber and black on this car. The, the, the side grills, the front grills, uh, which we'll get to, but um, just replacing that hood and the trunk and the floating wheel caps. I thought they were a little gimmicky at first, but man, I fell in love with them, especially now that they match all around the car. Number 15, we gotta get low for this one. Speaking of carbon fiber, getting the Sturkin bumper inserts. These things, oh, I, 
The M Performance splitters, I talked about them before in another video, but the Sturken carbon fiber bumper inserts still add a nice bit of aggressiveness and they just kind of flow now they have carbon fiber in the back. I needed something for the front and I didn't want to do the M Performance splitters because I just knew I would tear them up uh, where I drive. So that is number 15. Number 14, and I think this was like one of the first three mods I did and I knew as soon as I got this car I was gonna get this I wanted to get this for my 135 back in 2008 but I think I had gotten rid of my car uh, right as it was coming out so I never got to pull the trigger so I knew when I got into another BMW I was going to get it and that is the p3 gauge with custom LED color combo it is currently off right now because the car is off but I will pop in a clip here to show you what that looks like with the orange red amber bars and then the numerical numbers in white to match the white of the numbers of the dash and i use that gauge every single day um mainly it's not even for the boost uh I, now that i have the snow performance vc50 gauge i use that because that's actually tapped analog so it is like dead accurate um but i use it for all the other functions like coolant and air intake temperature uh, I even done like zero to six and stuff like that. I use that every day. I can look at my coolant temp and I, that coincides with when the needle moves on the dash with the oil temp. And I know that around 190, 191, 192, that's when my needle starts moving. So I know that the car is starting to get warmed up. That way I'm not pouncing on it with a cold engine. So, and it looks awesome. It has a lot of functionality to it. I love it. Let's move on to the next one. Number 13 and number 12, because they are so close together, is on the side of the car and that are these two. Getting this completely blacked out in matching and gloss black. So this is super popular. A lot of people do this where they get rid of the chrome side piece and put in the gloss black, but a lot of people will still uh, emit this side piece, this side vent, which is flat black on the standard M3 and M4. And once I saw that and it was an option, I just wanted to get this so it's all gloss black. It's not gloss black against flat black. And it just is such a, wet inky look um it just it it makes the side of the car look cleaner I, it's hard to describe it doesn't pick up that great on camera but those two mods together are number 11 is around the back of the car and this is super popular but it's one of those things that you, you really have to do uh, especially if you have a white car that's just my personal preference is getting rid of the chrome as you see there's an ongoing theme here of getting rid of chrome but making this gloss black uh, as I said before, I've got this whole gloss black carbon fiber theme going on with my white car. Um, the chrome just does not work, and I think so many people agree with me. This really makes it look masculine, and uh, it's simple, easy to do. Staying at the back of the car, and once again going with the gloss black theme, is the red reflector delete and gloss black rear inserts. Like I said, it just it, it cleans up the back of the car, and it has that wet, inky black look to it. I love it. Um, it's just the less contrasting colors of, you know, blue and red with the white and the carbon fiber. I just, no, I was like, I want just to kind of keep it clean, carbon fiber, gloss black, white car, love it. And number nine, something that I was late to the party to do, I admit that, and people called me out on it, was the front orange reflector to delete from IND, color match mineral white. And if you saw one of my videos, when I unboxed these, they were so gray looking. Like it was not even remotely close. Um, it's a funny reaction on that video, but this just kind of cleaned up the front of the car. Um, definitely a huge nasty pop of orange uh, is gone and really love the IND painted front bumper reflector delete and getting it color matched with the car. Number eight, let's go to the inside. This one I like because it was covered under warranty and that was getting rid of the silver M3 badges. Um, they were cracked. Um, it, they just looked like scratches, like really bad scratches all over. No one really knows the exact reason why the silver ones do it, but this was replaced under warranty. And I just love the fact that these uh, say M3 where the other ones were just the colors and M I believe. But anyway, um, I was like unsure about the gloss black because it was like black seats, but it plays and it's clean and they've held up and just really glad I did that. If it wasn't under warranty, I think I would definitely still pay um, to buy these and uh, put them in. Number seven is, we're, we're getting there. We're getting some ones where I just, I like to look at them and that is the Supreme Power 90 millimeter exhaust tips. 
I talked about this in my rear end refresh and about how getting rid of the stock exhaust tips and going with really whatever brand you choose, but you know, going up from the small ones to the 90 millimeter ones just makes the back end just so much more masculine. Uh, I like the Supreme Power because it was like this uh, heat treated matte black on the outside, but brush inside. So once again, this contrast, um, I just thought it was cool having this like brighter interior and uh, the, the dark exhaust tips on the outside. So heat treated black, brushed aluminum inside, Supreme Power 90 millimeter, one of my favorite mods. All right, we are at number six and number six is a very common one, but it is a must if you want that masculine front look. And that is simply the black kidney grills on the front of the car. Uh, the chrome, yeah, just not a fan. I uh, don't know why they still put that chrome stuff on M vehicles. It's a, it's a must. Whatever you decide to do, M performance, or you go aftermarket, doesn't really matter. But just doing gloss black kidney grills is a must for an M3 or M4. Here we are, top five. So number five is under the hood. Can't see them. Not even, even under the hood, really. Tucked in the hood um, are the AR resonated downpipes. I knew that I was gonna probably up the ante, which I definitely did, going from stage one to stage two. And I went with AR resonated. I am a big believer and supporter of resonated whenever you can do resonated. We all know the S55 is not the most beautiful sounding engine exhaust and when you do downpipes you just really enhance that even more especially going catless and there are a handful of companies not a lot that do resonated so ar is a very reputable brand great quality uh you definitely get what you pay for is a, what i believe and they had a resonated option i went with that and it really did not ruined the sound uh it's it kept the rasp at a very minimal and uh down pipes were also to up the boost so now that's why we're getting to the top five because it was allowed to up the power and at the same time not ruin the sound or make it any worse <laughs> number four one of the more recent ones and one of my favorite in the past couple months the Vorsteiner 4250 model rear diffuser. I, it is the ass of the car. I love it, I love it, I love it. I had a, on my other video, talking about the rear end refresh, I already had a carbon fiber diffuser, but it was just a aftermarket one or a knockoff of the M Performance. Um, when I did take it off, I looked to see what brand it was and, and it wasn't labeled, but replacing, I just, I knew I couldn't go aggressive on the front as much, so I just said, I want to go aggressive on the rear and check this baby out. Here we are, top three. Number three, no surprise, pure stage two plus turbos. I mean, what, what more can you say? Uh, it had to be in the top five. I, people are gonna be like, why is it number one? It's so tough, it is so much fun. The sound is just awesome. The power is just awesome. Data logging with this newfound power has been a journey, um, but the pure stage two turbos, man, uh, I like knowing the fact that I'm not running the stock ones to the moon. Uh, they, once you go full 85, you, you're really pushing the efficiency range on the top end of those turbos and you're really, you're spinning them. So the top end is great, I love them. No surprise, pure stage two turbos was number three. So here we are at number two, and a lot of people are gonna kind of be like, eh, and honestly, I was kind of, eh, putting it as number two, but that is doing the four pin crank hub. I'm not gonna get into the controversy whether you should do it or you shouldn't do it. Obviously I did, but it was a critical piece with the power level that I was going to do and a little bit of peace of mind. I'd rather pay now and not have to worry about it and later. So that was number two, and here we are, number one. Number one is probably the best mod any S55 owner can do, M2 competition, M3, M4, and that is boot mode. Boot mode, number one, no question, and I'm kind of doing maybe a two for one here because I want to talk a little bit about how awesome boot mode has been the past 12 months, the updates they've put out. I was a beta tester for doing the E-Net, and I will tell you what, it was just, it was just flawless. Like, there, there are like 
the smallest bugs that no one would know about. And flashing your car via your smartphone, direct connect, there's no way that can't be number one. And the fact is, without this mod, without number one, I wouldn't have had turbos. I wouldn't be spraying meth. Boot mode is amazing. If you own it, you know it. And there's no way that was not gonna be number one. Like, I am flashing via a little rinky-dink iPhone SE. This is our laptop that we're doing. And I'm data logging with it. And I've done a ton of data logs. Just for a heads up, I have not really posted a video yet of my final revision of full 85 that's because i just got my eighth revision from carrie jordan uh we're really dialing this in and uh this is like the this is the big daddy tune so i think that's why he's taking a little bit more extra time with me um and there's been some inconsistencies with my uh, meth spring so we're really dialing that in i'm feeling like i might need to do a dyno session too uh that would be a lot of fun to see what this is actually putting down to the wheels so there you have it guys my 18 favorite mods i've done to the bmw m3 in the past 18 months i've owned the car the car has been great i love it it still puts a smile on my face i still go down to the garage and just look at it and can't believe that i'm an owner of it uh there was a little bit of fear once i got into the vehicle and i started doing some research and learning about the, the, the crank hub thing that was a little disheartening um, would I have not gotten the vehicle if I knew about that beforehand? I would say I would have still gotten it. it. It would be interesting to see if I would have thought about doing all the power level jumps I have, but uh, I'm a modder and I just got to. And that's why it's called Just One More Mod. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. If you watched all 18, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe if you like my content and I will catch you guys next time. Out.